did 14th at ARG and I played Middle Foes, so I guess you just go right into it. Uh, you have to play 15, it's just too standard. Uh, you really just want to see these as much as possible, so that's that. Uh, another good engine. It's just broken engine. Uh, I actually was playing an Ekamon at first. Uh, sometimes I just draw and I didn't like it, and so I ended up taking it out, and for a different engine, you'll see later. Uh, Cleef Forts. Uh, I really like Infinity, plus I really like that they're normal pendulum monsters, so I can just make anything I want if the Infinity plays in live, so, plus it's just a really good side out going second, so that's why I really like it. Uh, triple Eccentric, just a really good card, <laughs> this out, normal summon out anything, or, for the most part, and getting your combos playing for turn one is really good. Uh, Rescue Rabbit, came in handy a couple Self times, self-explanatory. For the most part, I did this for is to make break swords or make Utopia the Lightnings when I couldn't get over stuff, and that's why I have that helped out. Uh, Maxis, it's really good to just main deck it. Like, even if I'm playing more cards in 40, I see this card and I just I do better. So this card going second is really good. And, uh, triple Summoner's Art, more consistently. Plus, uh, really good side out material going second uh, against certain matchups. So. I, I really like it. Uh, two fame collision because you never want to draw three or more than two. Uh, good searcher it fills up your graveyard, which people it can you can plus off also with Mithrium, and uh, I really like that that, that, that aspect. So uh, two galaxy cycles in the main deck. Um, I played this uh, in a theory of like if I went first and I didn't have a centric. I can pop my own combination, and then it can be live uh, later on in the game for Floodgates, or uh, if I'm playing a Pendulum matchup, it's really good to just pop their scales just as a plus from the graveyard. And uh, and I usually side it out going second, just if I know they're going to side Anti-Spell, or I think they will. So it's a really good side of material in that sense to just put in MSTs. Uh, two Desires. Honestly, I desired and to draw another Desires three times yesterday, and it was awful every time, so I cried. And I, if I ran three in this deck, I don't know. So, but it still, it did good when it wasn't doing that. So, <laughs> uh, Metal Foes lineup. Um, I like this lineup. I wouldn't play more. The ideal turn one board is to get all four of these out and then resolve all of them, especially the fusion, just to draw one. Uh, I honestly used fusion and then drew it back. I drew vanities twice yesterday off fusion draw, so that was really nutty. Uh, <laughs> good card. Uh, vanities, good card. <laughs> uh, maining the D barriers. Uh, still questionable because not knowing the matchups, but. I was thinking going first or second, if I can try to live the next turn and use this to stall out their board and if I can negate, get their tree tone negates out of the way and then use hit their Bahama Sharks and then draw so they don't have any next turn, um, I can play the game. Uh, I never really cited this out because there was never really any bad matchups, but I don't know if I'd main deck it. I, I still like it though, it's definitely a good card. And the last tech card in the main deck. Uh, Spicy! <laughs> two raw sphere mode. So my concept with this is that there's two things I was thinking about. One, if I lose the dice roll and I draw this, I don't lose the dice roll, is what this says. And then, <laughs> uh, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, so yeah, if I, even if, if I win that game and then I lose the next game, I go first the third game. So, And then if I go first third, then I can make that infinity. So, <laughs> or make crazy board. Um, actually, the other reasoning behind main decking this was, I see it as a win condition in itself. If I can resolve this card even the third, third or second turn in the game, um, and then if it comes back to me, not many decks have outs that they can't target to get rid of stuff. So they can't target it with the card effects or by battle or by attack. So if I get this to me and I'm playing ABC, they literally have no outs to this and now it's just an impenetrable wall on my field and they'll lose the game because of that. And if I can just keep chipping at them, that's the concept behind that. Um, I never really cited this out unless I knew uh, I was playing a deck that wasn't going to make a huge board. Uh, just seeing this, every time I saw this, it was just great. Like, there was many times where I just hit a triple board that I was going to lose if I didn't hit this out, and then stalled maybe two turns and had enough resources to just win the game from there. So this was really a great card. Like, it was a great card. I only drew it twice. I drew it in one hand where I drew both of them, and it didn't matter because I just resolved one of them, and I just kept the one in the other hand, and I fused with it actually to make Adamante. So, uh, yeah, all the pluses. So that's the main deck. Um, side deck. 
uh, triple MST. Um, I never really sighted in three, but the concept was if I was playing a super heavy back row deck, I would sight in three, but mostly just sight in two for the anti spells and switch them out for either the summoner's arts or the Cleaford engine or any of that concept. And then, uh, see ya. And then, uh, two system down. Never played ABC. I'm really glad I didn't side in the third one. I was going to right before the event, and I thought. If they side anti spell anyway, uh, this card's dead anyway. And if I don't have the out. So that's why I only sided in two. Uh, I would definitely side in going first and second against ABC. It's just a blowout. Uh, now, another thing uh, Triple Jinzo. Um, I did not play any super trap heavy decks except for our teammate Kevin, and I forgot to side these in. <laughs> so, so I forgot this was an option. Um, but this against Paleo matchup, uh, they literally insta lose. My, my plan is either to make the Mithrilium and then normal summon the Jinzo over it. And then get the Mithrilium effect to have another monster just to beat with. Um, if I usually make this against Paleo, they just literally auto lose. If they don't, and usually going uh, first, they side out the Raigekis and Dark Holes. Um, just because they don't want to see him. And then they have no outs, literally. Uh, two Ghost Ogre. Never really sided them. It was for the DD matchup, along with the DD Crows. Uh, and also the Fect Valor. Never really had any times where I wanted to use any of these, so, but they were options. Um, Effect Valor actually was a great option that I thought, in theory, but I don't know. And then the last two cards, which are MVPs, honestly, Flying C. Um, there were so many times where I slided in Flying C, and I made Oricalc and hit him for 46, because uh, I special in defense. So, um... What about the other, uh, what about the other niche utility with it? Yeah, it's special, I give it to them, and then hit it for 46 at Oricalc. <laughs> no, no, there's another one that you were talking about, too. Like, uh, with a certain main deck card? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess with the Ross Fear mode. So if they had, if they were gonna about to exceed, like they were gonna make Toad, uh, I would give them this, and then then they have three monsters, and then I would give them this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so uh, this actually, I actually did that twice. Where I would give them the Flying Seat, it would stop their play, it would pass on huge board, even if it wasn't very good. Like I said, if I just resolve this card, um, and it comes back to me, it's usually game winning. Con it's usually game winning. Uh, so in that sense, uh, it was really good. So that was the main deck inside deck. Extra deck. Or three swap frogs. Uh, so play the triple Mithrilium. I didn't actually resolve all three this tournament, but there have been games where I've resolved all three and it was just a great card, so uh, I really like that. Uh, one Oricalc. I could consider this bumping this to two, but there was never a time where I needed to make a second, but I could see it. Um, the full metal spells out, guys. I made it like once or twice. It's an okay card. Um, but it's sometimes pretty good. Blue eyes matchup suck up their blue eyes and they can't hit over anything else, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, so now I, I played the Adamante and I also played the Crimson Knight. Um, the theory behind this was if I they had something so big that I couldn't get over it, but I had a lot of resources, I would blow the resources to uh, to get over whatever I needed to get over. There was a game where they uh, they had a Jerry Curl Dante, so the, the Fusion Dante, and I had a huge amount of resource, and that's all he had, and I had nothing else to get over because I can't target it, and I just made this and then beat over it. So <laughs> this actually came in handy. Shout out to Brandon Ruth. <laughs> yeah, Brandon Ruth. <laughs> my, my second loss. All right. Uh, the two rank threes, Totem Bird, Break Sword. Made Break Sword multiple times. Definitely never made Totem Bird. Uh, Break Sword's just a really good card, honestly. Uh, hitting your own combinations and getting uh, pluses off that, it's really strong. And then them going even in the grave is not even that bad with Mithrium and putting them all back and stuff. So, Dante, I mean, not Dante, Break Sword, good card. Uh, the two fours and then the Utopia package. Uh, Made Cassell one time, never made Kara Goringa because I never really played the Paleozoic matchup, but that was in theory what I was going for. Uh, Utopia Lightning, package is too good, just hit over everything I want, no quickings. So. <laughs> and then lastly, the Cyber Dragon Infinity. Uh, made this multiple times, game winning card. If this lives and I negated something, it's, just, it's a good card. <laughs> And uh, that's, that's all I have to say. So, um, hold on, before, uh, before we get out of here, um, what, 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 was your, uh, what was your matchups yesterday and how did you do? Uh, matchups were decent. I had a lot of, not really many trap decks, which was really interesting. So that's, that's what I heavy sided for. Um, and then, uh, so my first matchup was Ying Zing, Metal Foes. Uh, he didn't open it very well both games, but both games opened Max C. So that was actually pretty nice. Uh, ended up beating him 2-1. He got a game off of me because I just didn't have a really good hand and I drew too many side deck cards. Um, 
Round two, what did I play? What did I play? I don't even know I played round two. Uh, round three I played BA and I actually lost there. Actually, no, 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 round two I remember, I played Mermails. That was a super, super close game. I uh, actually ended up resolving Sphere Mode on him and with the Flying C. So I resolved Sphere Mode and it came back to me. And the only way, we were in time, the only way he was going to win the game was if he uh, made Trishula and Trish this to, to get damage in, to win the game in time. So that was his only out in his entire deck was Trishula and he had the D.Va. So, uh, and he ended up top decking the uh, Neptibus, which was like his only, he only had one card and that was a Neptibus. So, uh, so I lost that game, unfortunately. Um, and then round three, I played uh, Burning Abyss. Uh, it was pure Burning Abyss, which was interesting, no Phantom Knights. And I ended up uh, misplaying game one really hard, and I ended up costing me the game. And then went first or second game, won that game, and then game three he went first, and I ended up losing that. Uh, round four... What did I play round four? I cannot remember for the life of me. Um, I cannot remember for the life of me. Uh, my other rounds were, I think round five was, you know what, I can't remember. I played Blue Eyes, I played Satoa Knights, and my, I'm, I'm blanking on my two other games, but they went well. Uh, beat the Blue Eyes, I ended up resolving Ross Remote on Blue Eyes uh, multiple times, two times, in a two-game match. Uh, so that was a game-winning card right there, too. But other than You didn't that, play any of the new DDs? I did not play any DDDs. Uh, I did not play any DDDs, even though I cited for them. So, um, other than that, it went well. It went well. All right. So, are we going to expect you in Pennsylvania come August? <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right, well, we'll see. How we'll that see. Happens. We'll see how that so goes. It's too early for that. All right. All right. So that is Brandon Lichter of Team Eagle Factors, uh, his Metal Phone deck. So uh, just go ahead and subscribe and like our page. Thank you very much for watching. So guys, that was uh, Brandon's video. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, down below will be a deck profile for my video uh, for the 13th place. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, thank you for subscribing and liking.